Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And this video is more of a correction that I want to do in the Cloud Kit videos that I was telling you how to update and delete. Uh, Brandon Williams was kind enough. We, uh, Brandon Williams, by the way, is from Point Free Videos. Definitely check Point Free Videos. And he suggested that since I am deleting uh, or saving and then deleting and updating based on the index of a particular task, that can cause some issues because uh, the delete and the update method can have a race condition. So I can delete something or I can update something that may not exist at that particular index. So either it will fail, it will crash the whole app because of accepting or trying to access an index that doesn't exist, or it can even try to update the wrong item based on the index. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of solutions. So when we are updating the item, we get the index over here and we update the item which is in our array. But if the problem actually exists, then we try to roll back the item. And this can be an issue because we are using the index over here, um, but the index may not be for the same item if something happens and this save is stuck. And somewhere else, I use a different device to perform the save or delete. Then the index is changed. And now that index is not referring to the same item. All right. So one of the solution would be to get the index again, which is I can simply go ahead and copy it over here and get the index again using the record ID. And then I can update. So now I will have that particular index that we were talking about. Another thing that we can do is instead of basing everything on the index, maybe we can put it in a dictionary and then base everything on the record ID. Because over here, what we're doing is we are trying to iterate through the array and find the index. So we have to go through the whole array and find the first index based on the record ID. And then we go again and do the same thing again. All right. So that's maybe not a good idea, uh, depending on the number of items you have in your task array. Uh, you will have to iterate the whole array again and again, or two times at least over here. So let's see that how we can accommodate that, how we can fix that issue. One way of fixing that issue, as I mentioned, is to use a key value pair and keep track of the items and access the items based on their record ID. This means that we can go ahead and create a task dictionary. And we will name that something else eventually. And what we can do is we can create this kind of a dictionary that will take an ID. I mean, it's kind of like a generic dictionary, right? So we will have an ID. And this will be the key. And the value in this case will be, well, whatever the value that you want. Okay, so over here we can simply say element, whatever the element that you want. In our case, the ID can be kind of like a record ID. So CK record ID. There we go. In our case, the element can be something else, which is a task item. So this is the actual uh, dictionary that we are creating where the key is the record ID and the item is the task item in the cell. So how do we go about adding a brand new item? If we're not using an array, how do we add that? Well, one of the ways of adding those things will be to simply go and add it to the dictionary itself. So I can go ahead and say dictionary, the task item. Well, I guess in this case, we'll have the record, right? And based on the record, we will create that. So let's go ahead and see what's going on in the task item. If you look at the task item, when you pass in the record, you get the name, data sign is completed, and then you also get the record ID, which is passed from the record. Okay, so that's fine. So this means that we can just access the record ID over here task.record ID. 
and the value itself will be the task. Okay, so now we have placed it in our dictionary basically. What will be the other thing? The deleting the task. Now, if we're deleting the task, originally we were going through the array, finding the index, and then we were trying to delete it using the index. But since now we're using a dictionary, probably we can do it a little bit quicker. We can go and insert the task dictionary, which is based on the record ID. So now the next thing we need to do is to get the record ID. And we can, uh, well, we can actually remove it, sorry, by calling the remove value for a particular key. And that key can be the record ID. There we go. So now we have removed something from the dictionary based on their record ID. So this means that we technically don't really want to do all of that stuff. There we go. And what about the inserting part, right? So if we want to go back and insert something into our task dictionary, then we will simply assign it again. So task dictionary and the thing that we were trying to insert is record ID and we will simply assign the task to be deleted. So that will assign or put the task back again, kind of like reverting back. Going the same thing for the update task. If we want to update the task, then we can use our task dictionary. We can provide it with the actual ID, the key, and we will get that element. And we can say over here, well, what are we trying to update? It's completed. And we can toggle it. We can go ahead and say it's completed. There we go. So whatever the value is, we will just simply assign it, and that will allow us to update it. Okay, that's fine. And for the rolling back, the changes. Well, for rolling back changes, we can simply say it has dictionary. We will try to get the record ID, meaning that particular task, and we will simply assign the whole task to it. So it's kind of like reverted back to where it was before. Now, currently, this solution is not really going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is that the dictionary itself is not iterable, meaning you cannot really go over it like that. So what I'm, I can do is I can create some properties over here. I can call it task items. Well, I guess we can go and call this task, which will be a task item. We can use the task dictionary and the values of the task dictionary. And we can go ahead, go run the compact map. So if there is any null in there, which I don't think is possible for null to exist over there, it doesn't even allow nulls. And we're going to just return the first item of this. So this will be the task array. Okay, there we go. And the final thing that we need to do is when we get the values from the cloud kit. So that is a populate task function that's getting fired. We get the records, and what we want to do is we want to go through the record. So for each, we will get access to the record, and we can put it in the task dictionary. So task dictionary, again, we can use the record ID as a key, and the value will be the actual task item. So we technically don't need this anymore. And we don't really want to expose our task dictionary to the outside world. We will use private. Now, you can even simplify this part more by creating a separate structure, uh, which was mentioned over here by Brandon, that they're using kind of like a separate structure for that, a separate data type, which they're calling it uh, identified, I believe, over here. Uh, where is it? Identified array or something. Let's see over here. Somewhere they're mentioning it. Identified array. So they're using that. And you can use that also if you want to. Okay. 
Now, let's go ahead and run it. Let's see how it actually behaves. Okay, so definitely we can see the item over here. How about if I say mow the lawn? Well, I already have that, so feed the cat. Okay, I can do that. This is pretty fast, completed, mow the lawn, everything is working out good. And the delete, which is the main thing. Okay, delete is also working. Let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, looks like it's deleted successfully. So this is a little bit much better approach. And the reason is obviously you can see that our code is much uh, less in this case, since we didn't really have to, you know, find the index again and again. And the uh, accessing items from our uh, dictionary is much faster because guess what? We already know the key. If you want to take it to the next level, then try to create a, a type that is going to represent this. Because one of the bad sides of this approach, uh, in, at least in my code, is that you have this task dictionary and then again you have to create an array representation so the outside world can see this. If you don't want to do that, you can uh, create a particular type like the one that is shown over here, the identified array, and you can use that to identify, well, basically an array with an identifier, like a, like a key and a value. All right, so that that those things can also work in your favor. But uh, that's it, uh, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you like it, and uh, make sure to download the source code. If you like this channel and want to support me, then check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have tons and tons of courses on iOS development, including Surf UI. Uh, so for iOS developer, also AR kit, core data, and so much more. So definitely check out my courses, and the link for the courses will be right there in the YouTube description. Thank you so much.